it's Guys David here, 1, 2, and 2, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day, and today is a doozy. We are looking at the best cards that have come out in the last 10 years of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, as the 2010s come to a close, the last 10 years of Yu-Gi-Oh! has really certainly seen some of the most powerful cards that have ever been printed. Looking at an entire decade might seem a little ridiculous until you consider the fact that the game has been around for uh, basically two decades, so we're going to be looking at uh, half of this game's entire existence for cards to put on this list. The Discord and I decided the way we were going to do this is instead of just ranking them from like, you know, 20 to 1 or whatever we're doing, we would look at every year this decade and give you two of the best cards that came out then, as well as a, a mishmash of some of the honorable mentions. This is to give cards uh, their spot in the in the limelight, so that like, a majority of the list isn't just cards that came out in the last like two, three years, because those would, in theory, probably have power crap pretty much everything else on the list. So that's a little ridiculous. And ignores seven plus years of the last decade? Seems stupid. I am going to include a scratch sheet link in the description below. You guys are curious to see the cards that we uh, that we considered for the list, because even with the honorable mentions I will explain, uh, that is not at even remotely close to the amount of cards that were actually considered. But without further ado, let's just get into it, because this is going to be a whopper of a video. We start out the decade in the humble year of 2010, in the middle of the Synchro era. Yeah, uh, that's like, what, three, four game mechanics ago? Neat! And our number two spot for this year on the list is Effect Veiler. Ah, uh, the great, great grandma of our modern ghost girl trap cards, Grandpa. Effect Veiler is a fantastic hand trap that actually still sees play to this day because, uh, hand traps be like that. You can discard this card from your hand to the graveyard during the main phase to negate the effect of a face-up monster your opponent has on the field until the end of the turn. That kind of versatile, useful effect in your hand means that you can even use this card going second to stop your opponent making their first turn board. Because a well-timed effect negation might be all you need in a, against like a specifically linear playstyle to stop your opponent from being able to do whatever it is that their deck is trying to do. This card is fantastic and is still amazing to this day. Honorable mentions for 2010 include Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon because a big body summons more guys and has an easy self-summoning condition makes this card fantastic for all your dragon wombo combos. Vanity's Emptiness, uh, this one is a fantastic floodgate trap card that is currently on the ban list, however, the year it came out it didn't see much play so it felt weird to put it on the list itself proper. Dandelion, for uh, still being a problematic type card to this day because getting free stuff in Yu-Gi-Oh is still really good. And Scrap Dragon, because we're in the middle of the Synchro area and it'd be weird not to mention a Synchro monster and Scrap Dragon, that was pretty useful. Pop pop, baby, pop pop. But nope, number one goes to Solemn Warning. For the mere cost of 2,000 life points, you too can use this counter trap to stop a summon or an effect that would summon a monster to your opponent's side of the field. The ability to stop not only inherent summons, uh, normal summons, but as well as like things like polymerization make this card extremely useful and uh, I really do miss having this at anything more than one. We almost have the full Silent Brigade. Just give it back. Just give it back. Just give it back. Come on. We're almost there. 2011. Here we go. Number two is Rescue Rabbit. This level four bunny has the following effect. Cannot be special summoned from the deck. You can banish this card face up on the field to summon two level four or lower normal monsters from your deck. You can only do this once per turn. Oh, here we go. Like I said with Dandelion, free stuff, baby. Free stuff. Two level four vanillas doesn't seem fantastic at first. However, when you consider the fact that this is, you know, the uh, the start of extra deck summoning mechanics that do not rely on having to have a particular spell card, uh, free bodies are free bodies. This card is good and it's still good. Honorable mentions for 2011 would be Xian, Trishla, gotta love banishing all the things, and tour guide from the underworld. She won't go away until I hit that 50,000, will she? Honestly, very similar to your Rescue Rabbit in ability, but uh, she really doesn't come into her own until we get uh, until we get like Burning Abyss and, and, and Xyz and things like that. So uh, she's an HM for the moment. Now, the one that takes 2011 is Maxi. This card is absolutely just disgustingly powerful. Pitching this card from your hand to the graveyard lets you draw one card every time your opponent special summons. 
Obviously, best used when chained to an effect that uh, would make your opponent summon, like, uh, I don't know, maybe like a Polymerization or Instafusion. However, just as a preventative measure as well, this card is just fan-freaking-tastic. It makes your opponent decide whether or not they'd like to take the maxi challenge. Basically, uh, is making their board worth all the card that's going to let you draw. Most of the time, uh, no. What a weird game state this thing creates, it's a very powerful card, and a lot of people think we should have this back. Perfect. 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 2012. The world did not end this year, however, we did get two very good, useful <laughs> XE monsters. Here we go, early XC days, what do you got for us? Number two is Gaga -ga Cowboy. Now you might say, well, uh, Cowboy isn't really fantastic. In attack mode, he's a beater. In defense mode, he just does some burn damage. Why would he be uh, one of the best cards to come out in the last decade? Well, uh, just from a number standpoint, the amount of games this card has single-handedly won is absurd. It might be uh, one of, if not the most, single-handedly game-ending cards to ever been printed. A rank 4 XC that is always at your fingertips in your extra deck to do 800 bird damage, which, uh, that's, that's nothing to shake a stick at. That is almost a thousand damage, and after a very successful battle phase, very often you will find, uh, it's those single-digit 100s that are all you couldn't do. So a main phase 2 Gaga Gao Cowboy 4 game is extremely handy. Obviously, nowadays, uh, due to room in our extra decks, for the most part, Cowboy doesn't find himself getting is played very often anymore. However, with the new time rules and things like that, <laughs> I, I call them new, but they've been around for a while now. You can still do some cheese with the Cowboy. It's high noon. He's got numbers on his side, baby. The honorable mentions for this year, though, are also very interesting. We've got Abyss Dweller for locking out that graveyard. Insector Dragonfly for uh, the womboest of wombo combos probably ever created. Number 11 Big Eye to steal your opponent's crap. Dolce Queen Tiramisu for still probably having one of the single best removal effects in the game. It's just really good. And Abyss Megalo for pu punch in your face. Punch in your face. But nope, those are all decrowned by another XC monster, Wind Up Carrier is a Mighty. Wind Up Carrier is a Mighty might take uh, that comment I said about Dragonfly away from him because this bad boy enabled a hand loop that made Wind Ups the absolute powerhouse that they were in the early days of XCs. I think we could probably have one and it'd be okay, and then it would let Wind Ups actually have have their boss engine guy, so uh, whatever. Uh, due to the absolute ridiculous wombo combo that this thing enables, it's one of the best cards printed that year. 2013. Unlucky number, uh, especially if you don't like tier zero formats. For those who don't remember, because uh, you get your years mixed up, 2013 saw number two, Spellbook of Judgment. Spellbook of Judgment might be one of the most powerful cards ever printed. Um, only being number two for this year, simply because uh, it itself is absolutely busted, but the deck it is in uh, is a relatively much more fair. It's just this one card that really puts it over. Everything else are they're they're good removal and they're draws and searches, but nothing nothing ridiculous. Hell, if we can have the deck in dual links, that should tell you something. But up oh, now, this card lets you refill your hand to an absurd amount and get a free guy summoned to the field. Uh, normally it would be Jowgen to keep your opponent from doing anything on their next turn. Uh, Spellbook of Judgment is just an absolutely absurd card. Some honorable mentions are Digusto Emerald, because Wombo Combo. Mermail Abystius just enables your plays. More, more body. Fire Formation Tanky, because this card not only makes its own deck, uh, Fire Fist's a fantastic deck and were one of the good early to mid XC decks, but also other decks like Bujins and things that all just happen to be Beast Warriors. So, uh, for being another Rota, which we don't have very many raw type Rotas, very good card. And my homeboy Lavalval Chain, our walking foolish burial, we, we just probably will never see again. Press F in the chat. 
if not for uh, this number one being what it is, uh, that Levolvil chain probably would have been it. The Dragon Rulers. And this is why I put the Dragon Rulers over Spellbook of Judgment, because Spellbook of Judgment in it of itself is a very, very powerful card, probably arguably stronger than any one of the cards in the Dragon Ruler archetype, as well as all the cards they utilize. However, as a homogenous whole, the Dragon Rulers themselves are far more powerful. All these big boy dragons can banish themselves or monsters of their attribute to summon themselves. Uh, that kind of recursion is ridiculous. They all get effects when they're banished or uh, sent from the hand, I believe. Yes, discarded. It's, it's an actual discard. All right, I just wanted to check. It's been a while since I read these. Not only are they big bodies, not only do they put themselves onto the field, not only do they have effects that when we banish one with the other, you get some sort of search or recursion, you also get some sort of problem solving or other miscellaneous effect in the hand. They just do a lot. Every single Dragon Ruler does so much. And they even got the babies, which get them uh, like their, their own search cards. Like, it, this was just very, very well constructed for a deck. Um, whether or not it was ever intended to be its own deck, or they were always intended just to be boss monsters is a little unsure, but certainly, as a deck, they are fantastic, and it took several ban lists to finally get rid of them, because you couldn't just limit them all, because they just found other ways to work. These, these cards are fantastic. Ah, 2014, one of my favorite years of Yugi Mans. It's like a duelist alliance format. Number two, we have El Shadal Construct. This pretty lady's finally back. We can we can use her again. She got a link version, so your Shadals have got they've got the tools they need to be successful. They got a, a starter deck, structure deck coming along uh, down the pipe. Uh, it's a good day to be a Shadal fan. And it's their boss monster. Good recursion of their spell. Gets problem stuff off the board. Decent body. Here we go. Other big famous hitters from this year are Apocalyphor Towers, Girgax, and Evil Swarm Exiton Knight. Oh wait, I almost forgot. Dante, Traveler of the Burning Abyss. He was almost number two. Um, it really came down to Construct herself is a bit more of a, a impactful card than Dante is, but Dante is a fantastic boss slash engine card for his deck. Um, so it's a Judgment versus Dragon Rollers argument again, and I wasn't sure which way I wanted to swing this time because, uh, <laughs> they're both famous for their format, I don't know. But no, they both get, they both get, uh, knocked down for Soul Charge. Soul Charge. This card was legal for way too long. It's Monster Reborn for as pretty much as, as much as you want from your graveyard as long as you can pay the thousand per guy. Uh, what a stupid spell card. It, this card is legitimately broken. I kind of miss it, but it made Sylvan's tier one. So that should tell you how good this card is. 2015. All right, we're almost to modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Almost. It's starting to feel like modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Number two is the Kaijus. Uh, let's, let's say Gamasil because he's the one that gets the most play because he's Sadly, the weakest at attack mode. Kaijus are a weird one because uh, I don't think it was ever intended that we would use them as pure monster removal because the co the fact that they tribute your opponent's monster to uh, as cost for their inherent summon is just next to impossible to stop. You, you don't really even telegraph it. You just kind of like look at your opponent, shuffle your hand a little, give them a give them a kaiju and say I sack that, and they're like uh, crap. What are they going to do? Solemn, solemn it like, and get rid of their own monster you just gave them? Uh, no. Although, for those of you who are actual kaiju fans, um, you should. I will also mention that Gamasil probably arguably has the best effect if you're actually using the deck as a deck because he's just as many negates as you can possibly pay for and he doesn't just negate, he banishes the card he's negated, which is arguably better than destroying it. So, uh... <laughs> Even if you are actually using him in a kaiju deck, he's still the best one. So, you go, gammy boy. Honorable mentions uh, for this year are Terror Top, for just being Wind Tour Guide. But, uh, you know, being versatile, because it, uh, it's a free special summon, doesn't blow your normal. Pretty solid. Necroz the Unicorn, for uh, being probably the one card that makes that deck work properly, because it recycles from your grave, as well as locking your opponents uh, out of effects from their extra deck. Uh and an oddly powerful level 4 monster that's like perfect for a kaleidoscope to summon. There was a lot of benefits built into this card. And Cosmo Dark Destroyer for being big number and untargetable and having a pop on summon and floats. That's a lot. That's a lot for a 3k beater. That's a lot for a 3k beater to, to do. And in the deck it's from, you can, you, you kind of just like get a free summon of it from one of your pilots. So it's like 
Not even hard to get on the board. But, nope. Uh, number one of this year, here's looking at you, Doug, is Brilliant Fusion. Brilliant Fusion is absolutely fantastic card. Uh, it's okay in its own deck, but it really saw lots of play in everyone else's deck because of Gem Knight Seraphonite. But even ignoring Seraphonite, a fusion card that dumps its material from the deck to grave is just inherently a good fusion card. Uh, that immediately makes every other fusion card look like absolute garbage because sending stuff from your field or your hand is just a terrible card advantage. Sending crap out of your deck is arguably helpful, especially when you look at Seraphonite, which requires a, a light monster, so you're probably dumping things like Trick Clown or Fairy Tale Snow or whatever and getting just free graveyard setup. And then Seraphonite bestows you an extra normal summon, and it's a free body. That's uh, so much stupid free advantage, it's ridiculous. This card's great. We're almost there. We're almost to the present. I can taste it. I can taste it. 2016, number two, Solemn Strike. I thought about making this some number one because, you know, Solemn Strike's really powerful. It's right up there with Solemn Warning, but it does have a, a bit of a different application. It doesn't stop effects that would summon a monster. It only stops inherent special summons, but it also stops the effects of monsters. So it does have a bit uh, different use. And it, it costs only 1,500 life points instead of the 2,000, which it kind of matters. 2,000 is kind of a lot. 15, eh. some of the some of the other ones are uh, Cyber Dragon Infinity for being uh, a fantastic boss monster. A little bit out of place in an OTK strategy, uh, giving you a control boss monster. However, sucking up stuff and negating stuff and getting power boosts. Oh, this guy does a lot. He really does a lot, and he's easy to play because he slaps right over Nova. So it, it, you get a lot of value out of this bad boy. Monkey Board for being free Pendulum Scales. I know, boo, Pendulums, but, you know, Monkey Board, that's just free real estate, man. And my boy, totally awesome. Single-handedly making frogs and therefore Paleozoic frogs, like an actual rogue contender, pretty much since the day this card came out, simply because this one XC monster might be one of the best. He's super ungeneric, being only made of, like, level 2 aquas, but negating something and stealing it is just absurd. No other card really does that. That's so that's so free. And if you negated something like a power spell or a generic monster or something, you're going to steal that and like get it for yourself. Taking your opponent's monster reborn is just so good. They're regeki. That is just ridiculous. And also it works as an engine card during the standby phase, so it also makes your frogs work. You get a lot of you get a lot of free stuff out of this guy. But no, number one's definitely Pot of Desires. It took him this long to figure out how to remake uh, Pot of Greed with having no real card advantage cost, but still making it weighty enough that it's like hard to just play in anything. No, nope, uh, banishing ten off the top of your deck face down pretty much removes a quarter of your deck from the game permanently. It's very hard to get that stuff back, so you need to build your deck around it by playing lots of two and three of, so that you don't just get rid of all of your combo pieces in trying to draw two cards. And it also makes it not usable in something like Exodia, because whenever we get a generic draw card, that's probably the first thing they think, can Exodia run this? No? Good. We 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 did it correctly. So yeah, it might be a heavy cost for a plus one, but it is still a plus one, and uh, as soon as this card came out, it saw tons of competitive success, because uh, as long as you build your deck properly, this thing is busted. All right, uh, editing the video, I realized I skipped 2017 somehow. It's, it's like days later at this point. Uh, I'm hungover from a New Year's Eve party last night. Oh god, I got the worst headache. <laughs> Bear with me. Number two for 2017 uh, is going to be Firewall Dragon. Firewall Dragon is the flux capacitor of Link Summoning. It's what makes time travel possible. Re helping you recur resources from the graveyard as well as replacing monsters on the board as soon as they are linked away really does enable the link mechanic. When the card first was introduced, this was one of our first big link monsters and it definitely served its purpose in promoting the mechanic, making sure that all of us adopted those blue cards because Oh boy, is this thing broken. I've said this before, but hot take, I think we needed it at least in the beginning of the Link era. Uh, 
it's a problematic, broken, stupid card, but it's it, it does help sell the player base on the blue cards. So I think it needed to exist, at least for that first couple of sets. So uh, yeah, that's, that's your Firewall Dragon. It's really, really ridiculous. Honorable mentions are Zodiac Broad Bowl, or just Zodiacs in general, because they dominated a format, uh, despite being like, you know, at the end of the Pendulum era and beginning of the Link era, and them being an XC deck. <laughs> Two mechanics too late, and they were still the best deck, because uh, XCs for one monster is a uh, really, really good go figure. That grass looks greener for being uh, similar to Pot of Desires, whereas it's a power spell that requires you to build your deck a certain way to get it to function, but if you do so, you do get some benefits from it. That Grass Looks Greener actually made 60 card decks really viable because if you play against a 40 card deck, this card lets you mill out the difference between your deck and your opponent. So a lot of times that's like 20 something cards. That's ridiculous. And last but not least, uh, for honorable mentions, we're gonna do Masterpiece. Having a uh, quick play pop as well as, you know, depending on how you tribute summoned it, it's immune to stuff. That's really strong for a boss monster. I'm not gonna sing its praises too much because screw True Dracos. And the number one card from 2017 has to be Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Not to be confused with Ash Blossom and Joyous Feet. Why, why the feet? When people think of the term hand trap, this is probably the card that comes to mind. Being able to stop your opponent from moving a card from your deck to anywhere else is just really handy because a lot of times if your opponent's trying to mill or search or whatever, that's normally a setup play. So if you stop that, you are well on your way to making your opponent have to just pass their turn because their board is borked. And this card is especially good against a lot of rogue strategies where uh, the play style is not as powerful, so it's a lot more linear, so one Ash Blossom just really stomps on him. Uh, and for a long time, this card was very expensive because it was such a good hand trap. Okay, uh, back to not hung over me. 2018. Number two is Infinite Impermanence. It's very rarely do we actually get a hand trap that's an actual trap card. Uh, they're normally monsters, uh, which is counterintuitive uh, to the jargon, but no, we actually do once in a while get hand traps, and Impermanence is one of them. Basically being a purple version of Effect Veiler, this card is really, really handy, uh, also still very expensive. I need a third one. I still don't have a playset, isn't that bad? But it does have the added utility as if you use it like a trap card, you also get to just like knock out everything in the column. That's just that's really handy. So not only does it negate the monster effect, but also negates that column's spell and traps, which is just, you know, just that's just that's just a bonus. But it's not necessarily a one-for-one -one replacement because you can't control any cards to use it like a hand trap, unlike Valor, which it's just a it's it's just what it is. Um, however, both of them shine when you're going second and they're going first, so it doesn't really matter in that instance. I don't know, it's, it's hard to say which one's better, but it certainly is different enough in its application that you could conceivably run both or one or the other depending on your preference. But still, that does not change the fact that this card is fantastic. Um, this year literally could have been the entire list uh, if we had just done a raw best to worst cards because 2018 was a ridiculous year for just card design in general. Like, we are definitely in the middle of links, and these are just ridiculous. Just to mention a few, like, Called by the Grave for being a weird combo of monster negation, uh, hand, anti-hand trap, DD Crow. Like, it just does a lot. It's really versatile. It's a uh, uh, quick play spell card, meaning that it, it itself and how it's used is just versatile, not just its effect. Like, you can do a lot with this card, and it always has, like, really... It's like, it's, it's like... Book of Moon and MST, just like weird things come out of it simply because it's a quick play. It's a very good card. But we had other things like Summon Sorceress and Colossus and the, the rest of them are in the in the in the in the scratch list. It was huge for this year. Uh, it was really difficult to pick two. But I'm going with uh, Sky Striker Mobilize Engage. Uh, it's just Pot of Greed stuck in a particular deck, and it honestly, it might actually be better than Pot of Greed. Being a rota for like their entire deck, and then if you have enough spells engraved, being a rota and a free draw means that it's not just pot of greed as a plus one. It's a pot of greed, but one of those cards is 
the one you actually really, really want. It's the specific card you need. The other one's just free funsies. So like, it's arguably better than Pot of Greed, but it is stuck in this particular deck. Kinda. You can use uh, Sky Strikers as an engine. They don't have to be their own deck. That's a whole other, whole other video. <laughs> With a Drones and a Widow Anchor and three of these. The whole deck itself is just proven to be next to unkillable without just banning everything. And this card is partly to do with it because, if not single-handedly, has to do with it because the amount of advantage it accrues and the fact that it starts and extends. It's a great late game card. It's like <laughs> never bad. It just gets better depending on <laughs> when you play it. It's a very, very powerful card. <laughs> and finally, the moment you've all been waiting for the last year in Yu-Gi-Oh! Honestly, I think 2018 was really going out with a bang. Uh, 2019, uh, it was definitely the, the cool down before you get off the treadmill for the next decade. It wasn't the sprint, so not nearly as impressive, but we did still get some cool stuff this year. Number two is uh, Agrapane. I know for my best cards of the year, I put this at number one, but that was because I was following... Are you done? But that was because I was following the, the ban list makes things go up, and this card's very good. It's a free guy tied to an extra deck monster. That's really good card advantage and easy to use and easy to play. And in the guard dragon wombo combo, it's essential. However, uh, uh, if you just look at cards themselves, this one was banned because it is required to do that to stop the combo from being good. Not necessarily that this one card is particularly broke. It's just a necessary step in the ladder. So getting rid of it makes that, that ladder stop working. But, but, but regardless, that doesn't take away from the fact the card is really good. It's just why it's not number one and it's number two in this case, because I'm not using that rule this time, obviously. But uh, yeah, you guys could just look at that other video if you really want to know the honorable mentions because every other card in that list. But uh, Phantasme is fantastic. Get it? The Biru for ruining everyone's dreams. It's a fantastic card. It's just absolutely just broke. And we'll do Gazelle because again, Salad Brand Greats are a really good deck, and this card definitely exemplifies the whole deck. But no, number one, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to Gersu. Fantastic name, very powerful card, and like I said before on the other list, uh, had I not been doing that rule, he'd be number one because it's just easy to play. Uh, it's it protects stuff and it sends cards from the field to the graveyard. It's not like targeting and, and it's not a destroy. It's a, it's very good removal in general got a decent body there's a lot going for this card so it's really good but all right guys that was the last decade in review uh like i said check out that scratch list to see if one of your cards was there and just not happened to get mentioned because like trust me i didn't forget about them it was just this video would be 80 minutes long and i'm sure youtube would love that but you guys would hate it and my voice would hate it and my camera battery would hate it and future dave editing this would would really hate it. But anyway, guys, let me know in the comment below what you guys think and maybe uh, what you hope for to see with the new Master Rule revision thing as well as just what you hope to see in the next 10 years of Yu-Gi-Oh! And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meadow who will, I'll see you guys in 2030. The Destiny Board tells me that you should subscribe to the channel, or you can watch some of these other videos. Now excuse me, my Millennium Ring has detected another Millennium Item. Oh, it's... it's just Merrick. Akora, did you remember to get milk? We're out of milk. This milk is bad. It was terrible.